give it to you straight. I have his I have his book here, Brother West, Living and Loving Out Loud. He didn't he didn't tell me to give him a book club. But uh, if you haven't read his other books, um, in particular, Race Matters, and the follow-up to that, Democracy Matters. Now I'm gonna caution you now. You're gonna need a dictionary and probably a thesaurus, because the brother is deep. Yeah. I'm going to read you a little bit from his book on the front cover. He's a New York Times best-selling author, Cornel West, one of America's most provocative and admired public intellectuals. Whether in the classroom, the streets, the prisons, the church, that the West penetrating genius has been a bright beacon shining through the darkness for decades. And I bring to you Dr. Cornel West. blessed to be here. It's a privilege and an honor. And I want the world to know that something is happening in Gainesville. It's called Gainesville. We not only want to move to a men, but we're here because we have a profound love of poor and working people of every culture, every civilization, every sexual orientation. Why? Because they are priceless, they are precious, and we will stand up. And Brother Martin used to say, anytime everyday people straighten their backs up, you're going somewhere, because folk can't ride your back unless it's bent. Yeah. And it's been bent for too long. We straighten it up, yes, and we hear it Bo Diddley Plaza. Give Brother Bo Diddley a hand. California. We had a brother who used to play organ at our church. His name was Sly Stone and he wrote a song called Stand. In the end you still be you, one who's done all the things you set out to do. Stand. You've been sitting much too long. There's a permanent crease in your writing around. Stand. There's a cross for you to bear things to go through if you're going anywhere. And the history of this moment in which people decided to stand beginning in Wall Street, on the Gainesville, on the Chicago, Detroit, over 150 cities, then it moved over to Europe, moved over to Asia. It is a global movement. Why? Because we're tired of corporate greed. That's why we're here. chocolate side of town, but when we talk about chocolate and loving our black and brown and red brothers and sisters, we know we love our white brothers and sisters too. We are in it together, but we want to tell the truth. We love our brothers and sisters catching hell on fence line communities with that poison that's at work among these corporate jobs. We love the precious children of all colors who have to wrestle with poverty. Can you imagine 22% of our children of all colors, 56 living in or near poverty in the richest nation in the history of the world? That's a moral obscenity. It's an ethical abomination. 1% of the population of 42% of the wealth. The top 400 individuals have wealth equivalent to the bottom 150 million precious human beings in America. That is oligarchic, plutocratic. We're tired of it. So if you want to see democracy in action, if you want to see folk lifting their voices, and you all know the Negro National Anthem of James Weldon and Rosamond Johnson from Florida was what? Lift every voice. And for too long we've been echoes. And it didn't say lift every echo. It said lift every voice. Because when you're an echo, you're just a copy. But I see originals out here. When you're an echo, you're an imitation. I see creations out here. 
And when you're a voice, you come together with other voices, just like Duke Ellington's band. Yeah. With all the cacophony of voices raised in such a way that it escalates the quality, it escalates the quality of the collective performance. And then you look at the collaboration and say, my God, we've created something new. That's what the Occupy movement is. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Democracy in action is raising your voice, just like jazz orchestras are symbolic forms of demo democratic action. And lo and behold, the mainstream media doesn't know what to do. They just want one demand or two demands. We say, no, we're a movement. And a movement has a vision, an alternative way of looking at the world. To hear Brother Malik sing his song, did you hear Sister Margaret put forward her poetry? That Shelley is right when he says poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. He wasn't just talking about versifiers. He means all of those who have the courage to think for themselves, those who have the courage to love. And yes, I said love. I am unashamed in talking about loving other people. When you love folk, you can't stand the fact they're being treated unjustly. When you love folk, you can't stand the fact they're being treated unfairly. When you love folk, you know that justice is what love looks like in public. Yeah. And we're struggling for justice. Just like tenderness is what love feels like in private. They say, say my name, say my name. I said tenderness is what love feels like in private. Private. I want to be very honest with you that as the year progresses, the Occupy movement in all corners of this country are going to increase, escalate because they turn and look at a right wing, mean spirited, mendacious, mediocre set of Republican candidates. And they say, no. And they look at a Democratic Party that says, we have nowhere else to go because we're better. And we say, well, let's start with the truth. You're too milk toast. Yeah. Let's start with the truth. You're too scared that both parties are tied to oligarchic rule. You got a conservative version and a neoliberal version. Yeah. We want democracy at the deepest yeah. level. You got your black brother in the White House. Oh, yes, I love everybody, including my black brother in the White House and the black sister he's married to. And those two precious black children in the White House built primarily by black slaves. <laughs> but at the same time, I believe an unarmed truth and the condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. Yeah. And so we want to tell the truth. We can protect each and every one of us because we're human beings. We have a dignity and I would say a sanctity. We will respect each other because we're human beings, but at the same time, we must correct. <coughs> and when we see any of our elites, I don't care what color, siding with Wall Street oligarchs or corporate plutocrats. When we see any of our elites, I don't care what color, engaged in imperial activity, dropping those vicious bombs on innocent brothers and sisters of Pakistan and Yemen and Africa. We look at the Middle East and we say, Lord, we've got Jewish brothers and sisters and Palestinian brothers and sisters. We love both, but you never have security predicated on occupation. I don't care what nation you are. It's because we are committed to what we think is right and moral and just and we're willing to live and die for it. That's what Brother Martin was about. That's what Fannie Lou Hamer was about. That's what Miles Horton, our white brother, was about. That's what Cesar Chavez, our brown brothers, were about. And let's never forget the racist policy against our new immigrants. Keep track of their humanity. Oppose all of those efforts to somehow lose sight, my dear sir.
society is managed. Now, of course, we're here because of the January 20th anniversary, yes. But we have a systemic analysis and we have a holistic vision. We know that our Congress more and more looks like a site of legalized bribery and normalized corruption. We know there's 13,000 lobbyists on K Street bombarding our politicians from both parties with huge money. We didn't have to wait for the super PACs to see the role of big, big money in shaping the political terrain. Yes, sir. But we make a connection between the corporate domination of the legislative body and the corporate domination of the executive body. Yes. Yes. Got Brother Jacob Blue just taking over. Where is he from? City Group again. My God, you can't get somebody outside of the corporate orbit. How limited are you? How truncated are you? What about working people? What about poor people? Working people and poor people have no lobbyists on K Street. That's why the Occupy movement is so crucial. That's why move on now, going. That's why a move the amendment is so crucial. We need to disclose all of the mendacity and hypocrisy that's been operating for too long. Yes, yes, that's right. When we make the connection between the Wall Street oligarchy complex and the prison industrial complex and the yeah. new Woo, Jim yeah. Crow that Michelle Alexander has been talking about. Yeah. That is the housing policy for so many poor people. $300 billion invested in the prison industrial complex in the last 25 years, and they say they don't have a penny for housing, no penny for jobs with a living wage, no penny for education of high quality. No, you just got war priorities. That's what you got. When it comes to jails and prisons, you find the money. When it comes to war, Iraq and Afghanistan and other places, keep in mind it's not just those particular sites. We've got over 800 branches of the armed forces all around the world. We got a ship in every ocean. Yes, we are a fragile democratic experiment that's been sliding in the oligarchy for a while, but we also an empire. And when we say that, they say, oh, Brother West, there you are with that anti American stuff. No, I'm anti injustice in America. Look at me, don't see me. See John Coltrane's The Love Supreme. When you look at me, don't see me. See Bob Dylan, that blue Jewish brother from Minnesota. When you look at me, see me. See John Baez. See Curtis Mayfield. See Sly Stone. See the Ohio players with my brother's skin. And if that's not American, I don't know what he is. But it's because we have unarmed truth as our aim and deep unapologetic love at the core of what we're trying to do we don't hate individuals we hate injustice we hate unfairness and injustice anyway to justice everywhere that's what brings us together I would not want to be in any other place than Gainesville, Florida today Y'all get that?